There is a common misconception that the Soviet Union was a brutal dictatorship, where one member of the Communist Party decided everything, <coughs> and everyone else just followed his instructions. However, this is absolutely not true. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Soviet system of democracy. First of all, we have to take into account the name of the USSR itself. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The word Soviet just means council in Russian, which already contradicts the idea of a brutal authoritarian dictatorship. So the Soviet system of democracy was based on Soviets, or councils, the members of which were directly elected by the people. So how did the Soviets function? The Soviets were responsible to their electors and bound by their instructions, using a delegate model of representation. Delegates could be dismissed from their posts, or be voted out at any moment by popular vote. That being said, there was a hierarchy of Soviets. Delegates were sent to their local councils, in plenary assemblies. These in turn could delegate members to the next level. This system of delegation continued up to the Congress of Soviets at the state level, with urban and rural Soviets on the first level, the district or provincial Soviets on the second level, and the Constitutional Republic Congress on the third. And finally, the All-Union Congress of Soviets of the USSR, or Supreme Soviet, formed by the members of the Central Executive Committee, SIC, or the Congress of People's Commissars, Sovnarkom. Now let's talk a little bit about the history of the Soviets. The Soviets were first used in 1905, and then reappeared in 1917 after the revolution, as organizations serving to protect the interests of the workers. Workers and members of the local communities would elect delegates into the local Soviets, and the Soviets, in turn, would debate matters pertaining to the revolution and make all the necessary decisions. In March 1917, the Tsar abdicated and the Grand Duke declined the throne, and the Duma, the parliament of the Russian Empire, was forced to assume the reins of the government. Meanwhile, a Soviet, the Council of Workers' Deputies, also gained control, which led to a dual power. In November 1917, after much organizing, the Soviets, with the Bolsheviks in control, collectively overthrew the coalition government. This system was meant to establish a direct communication between the citizens and the state. So, let's analyze each type of Soviet. First of all, the rural Soviets. These initially served as a place to discuss matters and make decisions on the local level. When the triennial election of village Soviets, Silsavet, came to existence, any village qualified as long as they had over 300 inhabitants. Their delegates were directly elected by the residents of the village. As for the urban Soviets, they worked similarly to the village Soviets, since they discussed matters of interest of a particular city, and their organization and election were by all means democratic, since their delegates and representatives were also directly elected by the citizens. The city Soviets organized meetings directly in the workplaces of the city, where the workers of a certain enterprise could choose their own delegates. Therefore, we can say that workplace democracy was also very much a thing in the USSR. Thirdly, the rayon or district Soviets were Soviets relating to the administrative divisions of the country, established in a way that reduced the number of territorial divisions inherited from the aristocratic administrative nature of the Russian Empire. That being said, the elections of the Ryan Soviets were by no means perfect. Why? Well, the members were not directly elected by the citizens of the Rayon, but by the delegates from the urban and rural Soviets. However, even this was ahead of any democracy in the world at the time. The oblasts or provincial Soviets were the second-level administrative units and first-level entities of the republics of the USSR. They were formed by the delegates of the Rayon Congress, representing the city Soviets at the rate of one delegate per 12,500 inhabitants, and the village Soviets, which were directly elected by the Soviets of small cities, urban settlements, factories and collected farms at the rate of one delegate per 25,000 electors. Any autonomous republic was entitled to bring 2,000 electors from the urban areas, and one per 10,000 inhabitants from the rural areas. In the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, there were 26 areas ranked as oblast or province, including the areas of 12 autonomous republics that had the same constitutional form as the oblast, except that they were headed by a Sovnarkom. Sovnarkom, or Council of the People's Commissars, was the highest executive authority of the government of the Soviet Union. The chairman of this council was the head of the government, the equivalent of a prime minister in the West. 
Each of these sections was charged with the supervision and administration of one department of the work of the oblast in the matter of local taxation and the budget of each oblast. The oblast collegiate organs, the Ispalkom, had the right to participate in the discussion of the budgets, both of the constituent republics and that of the USSR itself, insofar as these relate to its own area. The oblast congress was an important authority. It was the supreme organ of power within its own area. It had the right to control all public institutions and elections within the oblast. It also had the power to propose to the authorities of the constituent republics the enactment and promulgation of any laws and regulations relating to the oblast. However, the oblast congress had to coordinate its activity with the policy and administration of the Central Executive Committee FTSIK, and the Sovnarkom of the Constituent Republic. Meanwhile, the Sovnarkom and its presidium could suspend or reverse anything done by the Oblast Soviet. In the case of the Autonomous Republics, the Congress of Soviets elected a Sovnarkom, consisting of people's commissars, who themselves controlled the various branches of administration. In both cases, the USSR government was directly represented in each oblast by officials of such USSR people's commissars as railroad, postal, and telegraph. It consisted of 15 or more heads, which may have included a regional councils of people's economy, agriculture, trade, or distribution of commodities, finance, communal departments, education, health, social welfare, military, etc., together with the Department of Justice. The next tier of councils, above the oblast or Krai, where they existed and the autonomous republics that were around them, was that of the seven Union or Constituent Republics of the Russian Socialist Federative Soviet Republic, all of which were directly joined together in a federation of the USSR. So who was allowed to vote in the USSR, you may ask? Well, in the Soviet Union, everyone above the age of 18 was allowed to vote and participate as candidates in the elections. However, those who profited of someone else's labor, such as private businessmen and former officers, were not allowed to vote, nor participate in the elections. Meanwhile, ex-convicts and foreign workers were allowed to express their will at the polls. However, those who did not have the right to vote initially could acquire it by doing five years of some kind of social work. So, to summarize, each 100 villagers elected a representative of the village Soviet. These village Soviets and delegates to the Rayon Soviets, which in turn sent delegates to the Oblast or Autonomous Republic Soviet, which were also constituted by some delegates from the worker Soviets in the cities. At least twice a year, delegates were elected from all over Russia to the All Russian Congress of the Soviets. These delegates were chosen by direct popular elections from the provinces, one for each 125,000 voters from the cities, one from each 25,000. An extraordinary session of the Congress could be called at any time upon the initiative of the All Russian Central Executive Committee, or upon the demand of Soviets, representing at least one-third of the working population of that Soviet Socialist Republic. The All Russian Central Executive Committee met in Moscow as the Great Soviet, and settled upon the essentials of national policy. It elected a Central Executive Committee, which invited delegates from the Central Committees of all the democratic organizations. The Central Executive Committee to be chairman of committees in the charge of different branches of the government. And if their leadership wasn't satisfactory, the chairman could be recalled by popular vote at any time. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you liked it and you found it informative. And as always, all the sources and reading suggestions will be down below. Thank you for watching this till the end, and as always, Aktsabur Firizitovich!